Welcome to Tripoli, Lebanon's second city and a town living on the brink of chaos. Tripoli is only an hour's drive north of the glittering boutiques and flash nightclubs of Beirut, but it's a completely different world. Like neighbouring Syria, Tripoli is a predominantly Sunni Muslim city with an embattled Alawite minority. Just one street, ironically called Syria Street, separates the two warring communities. Now it looks like the conflict in Syria is threatening to spill over into Lebanon and Tripoli is ready to explode. We're driving in the centre of Tripoli and we can hear gunfire as we come in. A celebratory gunfire for now. The local Sunnis are celebrating the return of a prominent Sunni militia commander after months in exile. Celebratory scene here. The local fighters, they're shooting into the air, they're celebrating the return. The most important militia commander, Saad al Masri, he's just come back from exile. He slaughtered his sheep in his honour. This is a big day for the Sunni fighters of Baba Tabana. Saad al Masri had spent months in Turkey, the main logistics base for the rebel Free Syrian Army. But now Tripoli Sunnis want their Alawite neighbours to know he's back in town. I'd come to Tripoli to spend time with Ziad Aluki, a major Sunni militia commander and one of Saad Masri's subordinates. Ziad brought me in to meet his boss and get a sense of what was going on in Tripoli. Our leader here, Saad Musri, leader of Levit Tabini, and inshallah, leader of Tripoli, all Tripoli. <laughs> Takbir! <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. So, all these men here, all these fighters, they're all loyal to. Muslim, Rafaid. Rafaid, Muslim, Jamal Mohsen, we are fighting there. But bombs aren't a laughing matter in Tripoli. A couple of months earlier, a car bomb outside the city's main Sunni mosque killed 42 worshippers, raising tensions even further and dragging the city to the brink of all-out war. Tripoli Sunnis blame the Shia militant group Hezbollah for the car bomb, as well as their hated Alawite neighbours, whose hilltop district of Jabal Mosin overlooks the impoverished Sunni Bab al Tabana neighbourhood. Hezbollah is a dominant force in Lebanese politics, and its army of fighters in neighbouring Syria is slowly turning the war in Assad's favour. Both Hezbollah and Jabal Mosin's Alawite Arab Democratic Party, led by Rifat al Eid, are hate figures for Tripoli Sunnis. As Tabana locals prepare for Friday prayers, Ziad's planning a show of force leading a patrol of fighters as they set up a protective cordon around the local mosque. This here, we are secure this mosque. We secure it. Can you explain what are you securing it from? From explosive or any bomb from Syrian murder. Or any guys want to put any bomb here. This must be Muslim Sunni. How do you become a commander? Do you start off as a fighter and then work your way up? Or? Not exactly what you say. Maybe we become a commander from our area, my family, my friends. They call me to protect them and to help them. This will become to be common here. Sure. To help people, poor people here. Tabana's disaffected Sunnis see the Alawites in Jebel Mosin as an outpost of Syria's hated Assad regime. When tensions are running as high as this, you don't want to be an Alawite in Tabana. This uh, from Jabal Mohsen? Yeah. He uh, was here to spy us. But now, because it's uh, Eid Adha, we let him go away free. If it wasn't Eid, what would he do? It wasn't Eid, then some... Uh... <laughs> nah, okay. If they didn't know Eid, 
we take uh, with them uh, another uh, war. Our fighting, not because we love the guns and weapons, not, not at all. We're fighting just only to defend our system, to defend our relation here, what we see here, relation between the family here, big relation yeah. between Muslim Sunni and everybody here. There's an uneasy truce for the duration of the festival of Eid al-Adha, but the entire city is waiting for fighting to flare up as soon as the holidays are over. Do they have more money? They have many more, more money. G3? Yeah, G3, yeah. yeah. So as you see, we need weapons. We need gear also. Like and we need bullet. And we need bullet also because they have many, many, many magazines, many stores. Yeah. Anyone in America and the Arab want to help us, we are very thank him. Sure. Any guys want to help the Muslim city here in Tripoli, we are very thank him. Believe me, we need it. We need it to defend our Muslim city here in Tripoli. It's Eid al Adha, the festival of sacrifice, and one of the most important holidays in the Muslim calendar. But in Tripoli, this year's celebrations are unusually muted. No one has any money, and everyone's dreading the outbreak of major clashes between the Sunni Bab al Tabana neighborhood and their Alawite neighbors in Jebel Mosul. Abu Ali, you're the commander in this district, you're also a father. How does it feel bringing up your family in this situation? Tabana Sunnis all blame Rifat Alid, the leader of Jebel Mosin's pro Assad Arab Democratic Party, for the conflict. Kids in the street that's playing war, overlooked by Jebel Mosin there. The houses here completely pockmarked by bullets, completely ravaged by the war. There's a line of sandbags, concrete barriers. People are living directly on the front line here. <laughs> He's completely overlooked by sniper positions from Jebel Mosin. Presumably he fires out of here as well. It's a really claustrophobic existence. The army is just around the corner. I'm not actually sure if we're allowed to come. Yeah. Okay. The army don't want to film him here. Where does Jebel Mosin begin? Are those houses there? Are they Jebel Mosin? It's a completely deserted children's playground there. It just all seems so pointless, this conflict. They're framing it in terms of the Syrian civil war, but this conflict's been going on for generations, neighbour against neighbour. I mean, literally the width of this tiny little street, they're overlooked by people on the balcony, the enemy. He can't stay here long, he's worried that snipers on the other side will kill him. It's difficult to see what kind of solution there could be to this. With the Lebanese state too weak to provide security, space has opened up for militia commanders like Ziad Aluki to assert control. A butcher by trade, Ziad's now the de facto ruler of Tripoli's ancient covered market, Sula Amma, king of a statelet of a few hundred square meters. 
Hey, my store. Okay. So we work uh, poacher. Yeah. Uh, we buy meat, meat to poor people here. On the wall there, you have a, a picture of Saddam Hussein. Yeah, yeah. Saddam Hussein become after they kill him just Shia in Iraq. He become a symbol for Muslims for me. Shuma ki bideki. Shuma ki bidek. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Story. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. When I walk around here with you, I see. Everyone talks to you, everyone says hello, everyone respects you. Do you feel proud? Allah should be love about it. Well, happen or not happen, what happened here, but as you see, normal life here. Ziad's men found out through the market, setting up a protective cordon around the mosque. Do you think they feel more safe when they see your men with their uniforms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will be safety because we are here, not like any guys take money from any guys here. We do it just only free, with no charge, no pay, no anything. We are doing just only for God. Okay. <laughs> A revolution of shame in Syria. Thanks, Hazyad al Luke and his guys. So, do you help the fighters in Syria as well? Or? We help a lot as fighting. We help humanity. Mm. We help here uh, every uh, family, women, children in this area. Do you feel here in Tabana that the Sunnis in Syria, they're like brothers almost? Muslim Sunni in any world, any area, any country, we are brothers. We take our order from God. Muslim Sunni, one to every, everywhere in the world. Okay? Yeah. Here, Syria, Iraq, Australia, any area. So now you're all ready to defend yourselves? Everyone here, ready for defense ourselves. All what you see here, they have gun in his house. Yeah. Everybody have key for the saving or mustache. Everybody here armed. So is having any fighting? Immediately take his gun and go to defense ourselves. Yes. Ziad took me to meet his friend Abu Daas, who ran a kebab shop. In the 80s, they'd fought together against the Syrian regime, then occupying Lebanon. Now they both commanded their own militias. He is a big leader. He have about 100 men under his hand. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's called Abu Da'as. Okay. He's famous. Yeah. I've seen him before. Yeah. I saw him the day. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to leave them home. I don't want to leave them home. I don't want to leave them home. I'm in Arabic. I don't know. I'm not going to leave them home. I'm going to leave them home. I'm going to leave them home. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So, he put, he put from his pocket also. He didn't help anyone help him. Tabana's Sunnis closely watch the war in Syria less than 50 miles away and wait for it to engulf them. Clashes are common here, but another incident like August's car bomb could tip Tripoli and wither all of Lebanon into open war. Sunni Bab al Tabana and Alawite Jabal Mosin are divided by the width of a single street. Tensions between the two neighbourhoods are higher than ever before. Even the smallest incident can spiral out of control, pitting the two communities against each other in street battles. It's arrived in Syria Street, the dividing line between the two communities. We can hear automatic gunfire, there's obviously something going on. Military patrols, APCs running down the street, but it doesn't seem to have stopped the fighting. You can hear that now. Is it okay to cross? Okay. It sounds like this is the front line. Hey. Hello again. Hey. 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 Hey.
تمام هدول هن الدولة أخذت منهم ثلاثة المعلومات أخذت ثلاثة مطلوبين قصة تفجير عرفت علي؟ عم صوري أوصى على العالم هي ورايح هي ورايحة على بيوتها وبع قلنا قاعدين على البرندات ما تبين عليهم بيعوصوك بيقتلوك Just around the corner of this building, like a killing zone essentially for the snipers of Jebel Mohsen on a hilltop up above. They're so close, you can hear the reports of their rifles incredibly loud. Jebel, Mohsen. Yeah. Alawi, Alawi, Alawi. We're going to kill Alawi. Jebel, Mohsen. Nagan. What did you do? هلو هيدول تبعين للنظام بالشر الاسد هيدول خربين العالم كله هن الارهابيين هن 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 هذا ابنه ابنه مات بالانفجار الله يرحمه هون بالتقويه عرفت علي بيكره النظام السوري كمان كلهم هون بيكرهوا فيك تحكي اللي بدك يا معلم خذ ريحتك بقى بقى انتبه يا عم فراس ما بدنا بلا نعوز بدنا نبقى تعوز بس انتبه يلا صور بس جود هيك جود هترد عليه ما بيحكي هذا ما بيحكي يا الناس ريسبونس The army just drove past, everyone here is shouting at them, saying why aren't you stopping this, why aren't you firing back up there. The army didn't do anything. Both sides just taking pot shots at each other. No. No problem, no problem. No, I don't think so. No, 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 no. <laughs> While his son reloads his weapon, Abu Da'as calls in reinforcement. I'm not going to get out of the water. I'm not going to get out of the water. The uncomfortable truth about fighting is, it's fun. Abu Da'as and his men all seem to be enjoying themselves. <laughs> Finally, the army rolled in to put a lid on the clashes. Troops deployed to escort civilians away from the crossfire. But the soldiers came under rifle fire from Jebel Mosin and decided to pull back into cover. As they drove away, they fired heavy machine guns back at the Alawites in a last parting shot. At this point, we all needed a coffee break. Why is this happening now? Why is there firing? Because somebody before this bomb for a mosque for Alawi. Yeah. Army take him. Yeah. It's open war. Looking after Daddy's gun. As night fell, the army returned to dampen the clashes. The officer in charge pleaded with the militia commanders to send their fighters back home. It was time to leave. So the sun's gone down, apart from a few scattered shots, it looks like most of the firing stopped. The army rolled in in their APCs to calm down the fighting. Having a bit of a heated argument with the Sunni fighters we were with, telling them to put their weapons away. The Sunnis were saying, where are you? Why weren't you firing back? And then suddenly, a few hundred metres down the road, it's all normality, the shops are open. People, women, children, just milling around, getting their shopping, getting some food.
حبيب القلب بس شو يعني فاصلي بين تبين الجبل هيدي حر جديد يبقى على المحسن يعني هي خط التماس اللي بتوصل بين شارع سوريا وجبل محسن عرفت كيف يعني في عندها خيال بنيه مثلا اللي بعدها لالون وهيدي لالنا وبني اللي احنا جيران يعني عرفت كيف بس امور السياسيه بتختلف مثل ما انك شايف تحت اي مشكل بيصير بيقوسوا علينا شو ما صار بيقوسوا علينا نحن مع الجيش اللبناني نحن القرار الاول والاخير هو للجيش اللبناني نحن تحت سقف الدوله في الصوره هيدي مثلا هذا زعيم الامه العربيه انا بتشو هذا قائد نحن بنفتخر فيه مثل ما افتخرنا بجمال عبد الناصر والسيد حسن نصر الله نحن بنفتخر بهيك بهيك مقاومين عروبيه بس ما في حق الطائفه يعني عرفت كيف هذا النزاع السياسي عم نشوف الوزراء النواب زعماء طرابلس عم توقف المعركه دغري عرفت كيف لو نزاع طائفي ما كان وصلنا لهالامور هيدي وما كان هدت يعني كان روح ضحايا هسه اكثر نحن مقربين لا ما لنا مقربين لانه نحن نحن لو مقربين نحن بنحب النظام السوري نحن مع الجيش السوري مع الرئيس بشار الاسد قلت لك لانه رجل قومي وعربي هيدا الشهداء عنا الشهيد نادر خضر سنه والشهيد محسن ياسين ظاهر ايه هدول بالفعل كان حامين سلاح وعم يدافعوا على بيتهم على منطقتهم منطقتهم وعلى ارضهم عرفت كيف تم التعدي علينا ونحن من واجبنا نحمي السلاح لنحمي بيتنا ونحمي اطفالنا هذا المفتخر بنعتز فيه انا all the houses facing babel tabana have been wrecked in the fighting هلا ما بصير اطلاق راس نور السكان البنيه بين اطفال وعندنا مرضى وعجزه هون نحن بنضطر انه نزلهم بسرعه مثل ما نكشي في هذا الرصاص هيدي هذا الرصاص كله كيشف البنيه كلها لا رصاص هيدا كلياتا من تحت هيدا هو باب التباني هذا شارع القدور بيقولوا له شارع سوريا yeah. طب نشوف تحت اعلام القاعده اعلام القاعده وجبهه النصره والجيش الحر عرفت شو بتشوفهم كلياتهم تحت رافعين لا اله الا الله وما بعرف شو ونحن كلنا بنقول لا اله الا الله ومحمد رسول الله بس اني بالطريقه الثانيه It's amazing. It's so close. It's really strange seeing it from the other side. The streets were walking down a few days ago. Now feeling quite threatening. I feel slightly dodgy standing out here, exposed in this balcony, surrounded by bullet holes. مثل ما نكشي فهم في الصوص. هذا كله يتو. كمان في سكان بنية هون. هون الخفين هذول اللي إحنا جايبينهم لحتى نحمي الحيط. مشان سكان مثل ما نكشي في أطفال. فشو هذول الأطفال بيضلوا هون بالمعارك. لما بتقوى المعارك نحن بنسحبهم ونشيلهم، عرفت كيف؟ So exactly like the other side, there are people living in essentially four to five positions right on the front line, only a few meters away from the enemy. You can see where the bullet holes have come straight through here. There's been a lot of patchwork repairs. They've blocked up their own sniper holes here with uh, breeze blocks. هيدا بيت مهجور. إلى قد قريبة، هيدي كمان بيعيطوا لها بنية الريان. عرفت شو؟ كمان تباني وشارع سوريا، هيدي فيها دشة من دشمة من فوق لتحت. عرفت شو؟ وهيدي It's an amazing view up here. Uh, you can see Syria Street, the dividing line that's running straight across there. You can see the streets, the narrow, crowded streets of Tabana. And you can see the posters from Tabana. And from here, actually, it looks like the Sunnis down there have goaded the Alawites with their posters. In the same way, the Alawites up here absolutely plastered the area with the posters of Bashar al Assad. There they've got a martyr's poster essentially eulogizing a Jabhat al Nusra suicide bomber who blew himself up in Syria. Both sides are basically trying to piss each other off. Alam al Qurdi, Jabhat al Nusra, and the Takfiriyin, and the Arabi, who are from Syria, they are here. And to the unfortunate, to the unfortunate, our brothers in the area, you know, that we are together, who are the ones who live and who are the ones who are. فقرهم معترين وكذا الى اخره بالمنطقتين يعني تغلغلوا فيهم وفتحوا مكاتب لجبهه النصره والتكفيرين وجيش الكر جيش التكفيري اللي صاروا كلياتهم عندنا هون بباب التباني والدليل انه ليك تطلعها رافعين اعلام تبعون جبهه النصره والقاعده و... هدول معروفين عند جميع دول العالم انه جبهه النصره والقاعده هن ارهابي عرفت كيف؟ ارهاب منهم من... بقى نحن كيف بدنا نعيش معهم عرفت شو؟ It all seems much the same here, actually, as down there. The Sunnis claim that the Alawites were living in a lap of luxury, but clearly they're not. Their houses seem just as ruinous and as war damaged as theirs. The only difference is the posters. Here they've got posters of Bashar al-Assad. Down there they have the black flag of uh, Islamism. That's about it. 
Militia commander Abu Ali took me on a tour of the neighbourhood. He wanted to show me a place he remembered from his own childhood. Mm. This is insane. It looks like an old cinema. What was once a place of entertainment. And that's the house of war. Got a great view of someone's front room in Jebel Mosin. Presumably looks exactly like this inside, just sandbags. Firing position to fire down on here. This is all just so wasteful and pointless. I mean, this just symbolises everything that's gone wrong in Tabana and in Jebel Mosul too. I mean, the rest of Tripoli outside these two districts is normal. Life goes on, cafes, restaurants, quite a nice place. But here there's nothing, there's just this conflict. It's all these people have on both sides. Back in Sul Amr, Ziad Aluki was holding court. With the Lebanese state practically non-existent in Tabana, Ziad provides Sul Amr with security, presumably at a price. But at Eid, it was time to display his largesse. Pretty quick, clean death. It's a moment of great symbolic meaning here. It's a feast of sacrifice, but also it shows Ziad standing in the community. He's going to distribute this meat to the poor, his section of the souk. It's not just about his, his power, his military power here, but also the social services he's providing to his community. I will give it to everybody here, our family, our area, neighbor here. Everybody will become a big piece from this car. Crowds beginning to gather. Hajj Ziyad is going to distribute the meat to the poor of this community. In the complete absence of the state here, Ziyad essentially is the state here. He's the ruler of this tiny state that with a few hundred square meters. How many families will this meat feed? About 100 families here today. 100 families will be eat from this cow. Okay. Why isn't the government doing this? The government here, they didn't help any guys here or any family. In some ways, you're the government here. No government here. No government. But you're in charge, you provide security, you're providing food. Not exactly what you say. I'm in charge to help my people here, to help my Muslim Sunni. So the meat's all gone, it went pretty quickly. There's a hundred kilos of very fresh beef. A large queue of people for Ziyad's charity. It just shows what a significant figure he is here. My time with Ziyad was coming to an end. Ziyad's a charismatic figure, a sort of Salafist Tony Soprano, but his rise to power is a product of Lebanon's failure to provide for Tripoli. What the state can't do, men like Ziyad will. And as the Syrian war further destabilizes Lebanon, Tripoli's warlords will only grow in power. <laughs> I went to say goodbye to Abu Ali at his tyre workshop. He was in a bitter mood. 
دولة نحن متأسف نقول عنا دولة تحترم نفسها نحن ما عنا دولة عنا عصابات عنا دولة تابعة لحسب النصارى لحسب الشيطان بنتمنى من الناس اللي هي بعدها بهالدولة أشرف تقف وقفة رجال وتحكي كلمة الحق وتعطي المواطن حقه لأن النواب نحن هلا ناسك فيهم كلهم كذابين من سعد الحريري وأنت نازل وأنا كنت أعمل حفلات لهون بالجيش بعيد الجيش أعمل حفلات بعيد الاستقلال أعمل لهم حفلات ونحط العالم اللبناني مع الأسف أبنى إذا بيقول لك ليش حط البابا شو هذا بتقول له هذا عالم لبناني بصير يفزع عليه من وراء هالشغلات اللي عم بتصير بالشوارع نحن ما بنكره الدولة هيدي الدولة دولتنا وهيدي المؤسسة العسكرية لأن بس حرام هيك مؤسسة تتلوث بهدول العصابات اللي تابعين لحزب الشيطان و... وعصابة بشار الأسد الشبيحة Is it a sectarian conflict? Yes, it is. But when you actually speak to people, when they explain what they're angry about, it's really about the failure of the Lebanese state to provide these people with basic security, with a basic means of sustenance. Here in the centre of like the second city, people are living in absolute poverty, can't feed themselves, the children can't play in the street because there's no security. And their real anger is as much for the corrupt politicians in Beirut as it is for their neighbours who are living in just as shitty conditions a few metres away from them. He seems a really good dad. Right? Obviously, he doesn't want his children growing up in this. Yeah. Wow. That's life in Tibet. Yeah. Oh, Kelly, man. Yeah.